Hitless playthroughs, zero damage runs, and soul level one challenges are not enough. One HP, one stamina point, all of Dark Souls. Well, at least the stuff that you need to do to beat it and some extras as well. Now, the one thing that's craziest about this run that I must tell you, the B button doesn't work other than canceling menus. That means no running, no rolling, and no back steps. I hope you enjoy. To start off the game, we pick the Sorcerer class because magic is gonna be the most important tool on this run. And also because we start off with 30 soul arrows, this makes the Asylum Demon very quick work. You can see on the controller preview too, I'm pressing the B button, nothing happens. So even if I panic roll or I try to sprint or I do anything, it's not gonna work. It's, it's actually impossible. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna start the timer now. And we're jogging. <laughs> I will try my best. The goal for this would be 12 hours of playtime to beat any percent. And that's pretty hopeful. <laughs> Bad karma already, dude. <laughs> but why? <laughs> why do you do it? This run was already cursed, but I just cursed myself twice as much. Dude, I, oh wow. <laughs> I can't even get past that guy. <laughs> Unfortunately though, nothing can save me from that hollow on the staircase. His entire life's mission was to kill me. Can I make it? Yes. Okay, now I gotta run, as he's freaking out. And then get the, the catalyst back on. All right, this is baby's first playthrough, the sorcerer. You can just pretend that I have a friend that's really good at the game that told me to play like this. And then I just don't know what I'm doing. Oh, this is actually scary, dude. I could get stuck on objects. I forgot about that. Anything that can jump towards me or that, that's fast at pursuing, that'd be kind of scary. Okay, so we didn't die there. No, no embarrassment yet. Smooth sailing. You'll notice that anytime I open the character sheet to show the stats, though the vitality and endurance are level eight, the actual HP and stamina are only one. The way that I've achieved this is I've used a table on Cheat Engine to change the hero stats, or essentially the player, and force it to one at all costs. What you'll notice throughout the run is as I level up in certain instances, the character's health will shoot back up to the normal range and I'll have to keep recalibrating it over and over. Pretty much most of the stat leveling in this entire run is gonna be intelligence, and I'll start to put in a little bit of dexterity later in the game with hopes to increase the casting speed of magic. Unfortunately though, the breakpoint for that seems to be pretty high, and it doesn't start to scale until around, I believe, 35. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but that's what I read. I'm trying to think too, do I want to grab any of these things? Because if we're going to run intelligence, I might be able to use some of the stuff. Oh, a store a straight sword. Oh, this is bad. Rip. Okay, now I'm going to have to run all the way through there again. <laughs> wait, is he blocking from the other direction? Okay, wait, I'm going to see if I can backstab him still maybe. If I can do this with jogging, this is going to be pretty impressive. Oh shit, I think I got it. Almost. As you can see, melee weapons still are pretty effective for backstabs and parries. Oh. <laughs> but nothing will save you from gravity. Oh shit, I did! Luckily that Black Knight also had a similar fate. But he didn't drop anything too good that we can use. <laughs> I'm gonna go get the key, so at least we have the key once we get over to the area after Taurus Demon. And the game's gonna crash right there, apparently. Yes, not the, not the wrong character. Oh, now I'm falling through the map. That's one way to skip all the content in the game, okay. Fun fact, if you didn't know, using Dark Souls Fix on the Prepare to Die edition of Dark Souls, which is the original, allows it to go to 60 FPS, but at the cost of sometimes falling through the entire planet. Luckily, this only happened one time on the run. Very common though when you're going down big ladders or collision just gets really weird. I'm dead. After several deaths trying to get to gargoyles, ah, no, no, oh no, I finally made it. 77. Oh, that's that's really rough, dude. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I hear you. I hear you on that one. I feel you, Gargoyle. I feel it. Oh! I feel it! No, no, no third. No third. Ah, 77. Shit, dude. The damage from Soul Arrow was just not as much as I thought it would be. And I decided to come back later on just because we were a little too weak on the fight. So here, if I fall off of this right here, I'm not going to die. Easy. 
Ironically, on Taurus Demon, doing the plunge attack gave me the exact amount of damage setup I needed to walk him across the entire bridge. No greed. No greed, no greed, no greed. We're almost at the end. I greed it. And right at the end upon getting cornered. I kind of greed it. Oh. It's okay, we can greed now. We can greed now. He's dead. Yes, we finally did something. I had just enough to finish him off. Killing Taurus Demon this early in the run, even though I have Master Key, allows us to open the shortcut to Undead Berg from behind. That makes it a lot easier to get Griggs, which has a lot of magic for early game, and also allows us to get to Capper Demon very quickly from the bonfire nearby. One unforeseen terror that I probably should have accounted for is dogs. Oh, it's already running. There's no way. There's no way. Charge it up ahead of time. Yo! No! <laughs> Miyazaki dogs suck. Okay, charge it. Charge it. No! <laughs> they suck a lot on this run, especially when you don't have homing soul mass and you can't time your firebombs properly. These things will move quicker than I can actually jog because I can't run, obviously. And so I had to use some really, really weird techniques to try to kill them. I died here quite a lot, to say the least. After rescuing Harry Potter from his broom closet, AKA Griggs, and bringing him back to Firelink Shrine, all I can really manage to get is Heavy Soul Arrow, which will be an improvement for Gargoyles, but unfortunately the cast time it takes to actually project the Soul Arrow itself is a little longer. Can, is it possible? I don't know. Oh my god. Even though Gargoyles were improved a little bit, this was still by far not the best method to approach them with, and I think I could have done some other things. But then this happened. This playthrough sounds painful and scary. Dude, it's so bad that like I've actually figured out a way to strafe that intro attack. Why would why would anyone need to know that? That's just weird, right? So when fighting gargoyles, one of the most important things is spacing, even normally, just because both of them at the same time can be hard to manage. For the first one, I try to make him miss me with a bunch of different attacks, and I get 95 damage per soul arrow. Unfortunately, it's just not enough to make the cut, so as soon as that second gargoyle comes out, there's a lot of problems. I switched off to the heavy soul arrow and ended up getting 214 damage, which was amazing. But the slow cast speed did not let me win the battle of time against the gargoyles, and two of them are now active. With them both doing fire, I found this very, very fortunate and tried to reposition myself to finish off the one that had damage, but then the soul arrow missed completely. Now well in the corner, I basically need them to miss me, and the fire just barely by a pixel goes over my head, allowing me to reverse the whole space trying to finish off the one that's almost dead and still can't quite manage to do it and get pushed into the absolute corner. Crazy thing about gargoyles is they do input read projectiles and can sidestep, even though it doesn't happen as often as other bosses. And with them doing fire and me being literally pinned into the last couple square feet I could possibly manage, this happened and I finished off both of them. In a corner. <laughs> yo. In a corner. Oh my god, yo. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. It's impossible. It's actually impossible, dude. I'm fr I'm frightened. I'm frightened, man. I'm shaking, dude. I'm actually shaking a little bit. I don't know. I actually don't know. I'm fucking scared, dude. This is crazy. What's happening? No way. In the end, the best method around the corner was to throw the firebombs because the explosion lingering allowed them to walk directly into it as they were approaching me, finishing off the final gargoyle. Well, that actually, if I saw someone do that, that freaked me out a little bit. That was pretty crazy. Back to Griggs, and I grabbed the Great Heavy Soul Arrow as an improvement upon the Heavy Soul Arrow in hopes that maybe Quail Egg would be a lot easier than gargoyles. Because a lot of research wasn't done on this run ahead of time, I was very curious of how certain rings that affect the health and stamina of the character would play out in 1 HP, 1 stamina. So I killed Lotrek to see if favor and protection would change anything with the stats. Unfortunately, it didn't affect anything at all. Quick. You have to flip a coin. Heads or tails? Okay. That looks like the Drake pick tails. <laughs> One of the most important things in this entire run would be the Dusk Crown. There's a chance. There's actually a chance. Oh, but I can't do anything in the water. Oh, no! Killing the Hydra in the Darkroot Basin allows you to have access to this item later on in Dusk's quest line. Unfortunately, this early in the game though, the magic's just so weak, and because I move so slow in water, an item I'm gonna have to get later on in the game is the Rusted Iron Ring, which allows you to walk at regular speed in any swamp or water. So for now, I'm completely abandoning this approach. 
Upon figuring out the best method to get down to Blight Town carefully, I finally get to the swamp, realize that it's going to be very, very hard for the poison damage. For one, because of the rusted iron ring that I mentioned earlier not being present, which allows you to walk quicker in water. And two, I need higher poison resistance. I also need something to kind of cancel the poison too. There's a couple different ways we can do this. I do end up grabbing some magic very soon. In the meantime though, I try the gargoyle helmet out to see if I can have a little bit of better poison resistance upon returning, only to realize the one missed opportunity that would have been a game changer is getting the gargoyle axe from the tail cut. The gargoyle axe allows you to resist poison much better in combination. Grabbing the crimson set and the spell remedy, which allows you to clear status effects as they're building up, is a really good play because my resistance is already higher, and I can use that in place of purple moss, which would be really consuming to farm on the run over and over again. Yeah, poison still killed me. Nice. <laughs> Just barely? Oh <gasps> No, dude. Oh my god. Shout out to chat for reminding me that I could also buy poison bite ring from Oswald. Yo! Damn it, he jumped. Gotta be very careful! Oh no, he caught up, dude. <laughs> Good. No, dude. It, yo. I should probably kill Crestfallen too, you know what? Actually, I wonder if Crestfallen's easy to kill. You know it's rough when you have to kill Crestfallen for some souls. You have some. Ah. <laughs> I could probably just spam him with this stuff though. I think he only gives 1500. <laughs> Speaking of which, wait, I think he's alive. No way. Oh, there we go. Oh, he gives a thousand. That's it. I was also luckily able to pick up some extra souls from the rotten dragon that I had aggroed earlier in the game. We'll just be here for 10 hours. All right, here we go. We're good. How much does he give? 5,000? 3,000, not too bad, okay. I'm gonna try my luck and do this the same way. <laughs> maybe it'll be possible? Uh, just, just maybe? Yeah, okay. Can we go over to Red Tear Stone as well? Can we make it? Just to see? Just to see? Just to see? I'm, I'm going. I'm, 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 I'm dead. Yeah. That was ridiculous. <laughs> This is what it looks like when you don't know how to play the game and you forget you can run, essentially. That's exactly what would happen. Uh... <laughs> uh, that's... Yeah, that's bad. Do they only follow you at the one part? That... Dude! God damn it. I'm being very quick here. I'm being very quick here. I think I might still have to eat the other one. Mosquito's right there. Strafing, just strafing the mosquito. Strafing the mosquito. You can't see me. John Cena, mosquito. Okay, here we go. Mosquito, try again. I dare you to. Hide behind the wall. Yep, flying away. Too bad. Too bad. Got both of you. Okay, cool. Progress. Um, are they infinite? Dude, they just, they appear. He appeared from nowhere, dude. There's no way. There's no way that's infinite. Oh, boulder guy actually did activate. I'm wrong about that. <laughs> I went the wrong way, I think. So it would basically be like, yo, come on. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> well, that's a way to get down. One thing that hasn't been brought up in this run yet is because you cannot sprint, of course you can't jump. In Dark Souls 1, the only way to jump is to start running and then hit the jump button. And because we don't have the ability to do that, someone that was an absolute genius in my chat thought of the idea of using the jump attack on a spear to be able to close a gap in the game that we needed to get the rusted iron ring. The way this works is there's some special attacks on weapons where if you hit the heavy attack button and forward at the same time, they do a special animation. Curve swords have a backflip animation and spears have a jump attack. Okay, yeah, now we can actually jump this or not. Fortunately, even though the idea was pretty crazy, the jump attack was enough to clear the gap and get us back to Undead Asylum where the rusted iron ring resides. This ring is gonna change everything. No, no, uh, I almost strafed him. Okay, wait, what am I doing here? I'd have to actually like open the, dude, what? The initial method I ended up using to get to Quail Lake for my first attempt was munching a bunch of moss that I had farmed before I actually thought of the idea of remedy and a better route that had less footwork to get to the actual domain. Beautiful, beautiful, okay. We're cooking, dude, let him cook. 
smells like five stars. Okay, okay, we're good. Nice. Oh no, I'm dead. Crazy, dude. Um, yeah. No, see, again. My god, dude. Why is she doing that every time? Yep, okay, there we go. Okay, okay. Oh, cast speed, dude. Oh, man. What I was trying to do on Quayleg was chain stagger her human half over and over again, looping her into a death. Unfortunately, the time it took to cast the heavy soul arrow was so much that I could not figure out how to do this. Nice, nice. Oh, heavy's still too, dude, wow. I ended up going to Griggs and buying a second copy of the regular soul arrow to have so many castings that at least the cast speed would be enough, and if the damage didn't pull through with one full batch of them, we had double the normal amount. I feel it. Yep, it was almost there. Oh shit. Oh no. Dude, that sucks. That sucks, man. What are we doing here? Are we running away? Oh, this is actually a good start. I think anything that makes her rotate too, again, like from a distance even, is pretty good. Okay, that was looking okay for a second. A little bit of a late start time on that. Still good? Yep. Uh, still good? Yep. We got three left, so this is a really good start. I think we, we might be able to do it differently than how I was doing it before. This was my original plan, and then when I figured out, oh yeah, you could do the stagger thing, I was like, maybe we try that. This, the original plan idea seems better, though. It's a little cooler to watch, probably. Unless you didn't know about the, the stagger. Okay, please do the big lava. Thank you. And then, oh. Screwed up the casting there. How much do these do? 202, that's still pretty good. Oh, staircase. Be careful. Ooh, the wall. Okay, be careful there too. This kind of reminds me, I think we did Great Bow, and I'm not sure if the Great Bow was on regular New Game or not, but this reminds me of that. Will we clear the lava? Will we clear it? Oh, big lava, okay, cool. And then one more. Oh, dude, it's like one more after this. One more thrust attack, that's it. Come on. I think that's it. Yes, dude, finally. Ironically, even though that is one of the coolest ways to kill Quail Egg, the looping method, unfortunately in the end I just literally used the heavy arrows and killed her from a distance. Please do not shoot me with lightning from behind. Oh my god. Yes, yes. Amazing attack, amazing attack. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, this is bad. Okay, uh, no, don't, sh don't, don't attack. No! No! Oh, I didn't lock- I tried to lock on and it didn't work because he was like in a weird place, so it didn't- it didn't do anything. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't think that was gonna happen. Uh, that's bad. Wonder how many different timings there actually are for this part? Oh my god. That was wild, dude. Nice. <laughs> that was really crazy. I think this is a PB right now. This part is definitely not guaranteed. Uh, okay, yep. Never mind. Okay. It's it's better, apparently. It's it's actually better. Don't kill me. No! <laughs> okay. Whoa. Uh. Sketchy. What? <laughs> no! Ah, oh, man. Don't. No. No, dude. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking nuts. 
No, dude. Why am I getting blocked? No, dude. <laughs> Every single time I'm trying to be more prepared here. Upon getting through Sense Fortress the first time, almost successfully, oh my God. the boulder on the outside staircase doesn't actually crush me. But going back the second time and after that, it was so quick that I actually used a quit out to get through that staircase section. The main goal of going through Sense Fortress the first time successfully is to get Big Hat Logan unlocked from his cage, allowing him to be rescued back to Firelink Shrine where I can buy even better spells. And then I grab Homing Soul Mass and we go back to Sense Fortress again. After finally making it to the actual top of Sense Fortress, I grab the bonfire, I try Iron Golem, and and that yeah embarrassingly die. Yup. Thankfully, on the second attempt, I redeem myself and I kill the Iron Golem. The main method on the Iron Golem is going through his legs, allowing him to miss you with his swings, and similar to the melee run, spamming a bunch of magic on one of his boots to make him wobble fall over and you should have enough damage to kill him before he can get back up fully alternatively if you're really classy you could make him fall off the edge but i didn't even want to try that on this one That's good i like this don't punch it's fine yep nice Right in the nuts. Two in the nuts. I have a theory that uh, this is the way that the balls from uh, Elden Ring came up. Is my character just kind of chopped them off with a bunch of magic from Iron Golem? That's that's how they that's how they made it into Elden Ring. Boggart only has the iron balls because we literally laid the path before his time so that they could be removed from the Iron Golem. Due to inflation and Big Hat Logan's absurd prices, I had to farm a little bit at the beginning of Sense Fortress to afford some of his magic so we could actually do this thing. Upon acquiring Soul Spear, we went right back into the fortress. No, the throwing knife. Okay, we're good, we're good. Solid, nothing's wrong. Easy part of the game, super easy. You probably thought I was gonna die on the rafters in Inner Orlando, the place that's the most notorious right before the Ledge of Death with the two Silver Knight snipers, but you were wrong. Those painting guardians have a low IQ, and I exposed it. Unfortunately, this gargoyle was the much more academically gifted cousin of the gargoyles I killed before, and his IQ was 240. Stop doing that. Uh, uh, just fuck. No! No! Oh. Run? Please, 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 please. Just chill, just chill. Chilling. Okay. Good. We're chilling. They're kind of weird. They can't really get up there, but this one might fall off though. And he did. Uh, the other one will probably just chill. No. Yo. Yo. Oh my god. <laughs> this this run is nuts, man. <laughs> Every single thing you do feels like such a power play that it's it's just like I can't actually describe it. It's like you're doing things that are like it doesn't look that crazy, but it feels nuts though. The best method I could think of on the fly to deal with the ledge of death was to shoot an arrow, making the silver knight on the right side turn away from me, giving me a little bit more leeway to run up the bridge. At the top, it was just gonna be purely spontaneous, and we had an exchange that was so close that if this wasn't first try, it might've been painful to get through here in the future. Please don't shoot again. Okay, yo. Yep. Yep, no. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, first try on the ledge, man. Usually for Anna Orlando on most runs I do, I jump off of the spiral staircase in between and get right to ONS immediately. But on this run, because we can't jump, we have to run all the way up the long way. <laughs> Some last minute details before ONS is saying your prayers to Miyazaki and leveling intelligence as much as possible. What you're about to see next on this Silver Knight, I've never seen in my life before, and it doesn't really make sense to me. Please tell me in the comments, though, if you've seen this, because I want to have someone to relate to. Otherwise, this is just purely scary. Dude, did you guys see that? Man, the guy was on the floor for a second. That was weird. Okay, Galaxy. What? What's he doing? Why is he doing that? Has anybody seen that before? Wait, dude, he's dodging my attacks with the stance up. <laughs> what the fuck? Cheat engine memes, is that why? 
So we're literally cheating to make the game harder, and then this guy's making it even harder than I want it to be? As a joke? <laughs> it's actually making it difficult to fight him. <laughs> Dude, he's, he's trying to deflect my... He's like doing some Sekiro moves or something. I've never even seen that. No! How'd I live? Strangely enough, there's some attacks on this run that won't kill the character right away, and I have no idea how that's even possible. Sometimes I'll just roll with it, though, and it is kind of rare, but it does happen later on in the game as well. Okay, this time I'm going to make it through, and I'm going to attempt the fight. There's no way it could go any other way. It's impossible. I'm actually at a level where my perception is so fast that I can see the future before the future knows that it's going to happen. Therefore, I can make the future, so I'm going to create the future that has me making it to ONS. See, I can even curve the attacks around walls now because my skill level of just reaction time included with the abilities of the magic in the game are so top tier. That didn't work, damn it. Realized how do I get around Ornstein? Yo, okay, we're good, we're good. Oh my God, oh, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Look, I'm doing it, no, I'm not. <laughs> I really did be doing thinking that I was doing stuff, but the stuff that I do be thinking was not doing as much as I thought I did do. Even though you guys might think that Ornstein and Smell would be one of the hardest bosses on this run, it's actually getting to them and also not getting killed through the fog gate at the beginning of the fight that annoyed me the most. The main strategy of what we're looking for is one of two things on the introduction. Ornstein will either do a glide attack that's very long, which you can space by strafing right as long as he's centered with you, Sometimes he does curve around the pillars, so you do have to line up with him and get some distance. And alternatively, he can run towards you and do various different attacks. Mainly, you make space with either of these. You hit him with two soul spears, which will stagger him, and you have the homing soul mass active, where at that point, it should only take one more casting to kill him. Smo would have to be distracted at this point, whether it's him being far away by default or being stuck on a pillar. Into phase two, you literally just use Smo getting stuck on a pillar as your advantage and blindly no-scope him with the soul arrows over the top of the pillar. So you probably, you might have to do free aim on him. Okay, I gotta time this right. Nice. Only have three left. Soul Mass is really good. Nice. O and S are dead, dude. Nice, I got it. <laughs> For all you nerds in chat that like Guinevere, I killed her so we didn't have to get distracted because we're doing business. Goodbye. Okay, I gotta be quick. Can I make it? 30 FPS, dude, no! <laughs> Here we come to yet another various fun fact of the run. When you have Dark Souls Fix enabled, which is the mod again to make your game higher quality for the original Dark Souls and 60 FPS, the 60 frames per second make the character kind of weird on slanted surfaces. Sometimes you can't even run up hills. So what happens is that I get stuck on this part where normally I'd be able to drop down. To be able to do this smoothly, I literally have to change the frame rate back to 30 with a hotkey, then go back to 60 after I fall down. 
Some people might say this is a skill issue. Those people are actually just big babies that can't afford the $300 price tag of the game key to get prepared to die edition because they didn't buy it early enough in time when they should have before the inflation. <laughs> it's right now. All right. <laughs> Today is the day where we make a lot of progress very quickly. That's what I'm claiming. This guy's stuck in a wall? Oh my god. Dude, he almost killed me. Why? <laughs> Why is that even possible? Seems like this guy in Undead Burg was trying to pull off the IRL burglar skip where you break into the house from the second story, but unfortunately he got stuck in the wall in the process. <laughs> he blocked the firebomb through the wall, dude. Are you kidding me? Oh shit, the dog. Uh, no, don't kill me. Oh, this is hard. This is really hard because it catches up sometimes. Uh, scary. No! No, 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 no. Don't even you dare. Don't even you don't dare. No. Ah, uh, much. I really just need to kill the. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, he got stuck. What? You know, we already said that dogs were pretty bad in this run, but it got to the point where they're so desperate they had to actually teleport. For those that didn't know, you can kill Capra Demon without even going inside the fog gate. Sure, there's other cheesy methods as well, like using Ring of Fog and Hidden Body to hide in the corner and being invisible, but this one's super fun. You take a bow, line yourself up in the corner like this, aim the crosshairs at four of the castle notches from the left, and spam as many firebombs as you need until that goober is dead. Capra Demon's not required to beat the game, and you might wonder why I'm even killing him. Well, the key that he gives you allows you to open the depths, allowing you to access Blighttown from the top, giving you access to the spell Power Within. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> that is the easy way to do that. Power Within would be rather useless on a regular run with low health, but in this context, it does something very special, which I'll show you later on. Since Power Within is actually a pyromancy, I do need a pyromancy hand to cast it. So I'm going to go to Engi, who's part of the Chaos Covenant, and get the Egghead, and then allow him to give me the Pyromancy Hand and reverse the Egghead after. After countless deaths and presumably losing close to 100,000 souls total that I could never use to upgrade the character on this run, I decide to just kill Andre because the Crest of Artorius to get into the forest and kill Sif is 20k. Oh my god, dude. Sif ended up being one of the most RNG heavy fights on the run. If he does the running attack towards you at the beginning, you're dead. You can't block it. You can't kill him before that unless you're really strong. And so we had to kind of work with what he gave us. He can jump at the beginning, which is a really, really good opportunity. But then he can also land on you and kill you because it does one point of damage when he steps on you. So you have to kind of walk outside of his legs when he lands. The block didn't work there. Damn it. Oh, man. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> ah. Damn it. Dude, he's so fast. There we go. Oh, yeah, but he can land on you, too. Damn it. Sif was becoming a bit too much, so I decided to place the Lord Vessel and go over to Archives to progress that area. Getting through Archives wasn't too bad the first time around, but as soon as I got trapped in the prison by the Invincible Seath, then things got a little tricky. Oh, my God, dude. Ah, the only thing that will possibly improve. Fuck! <laughs> no! It's, fuck! Wow, I thought that would work. Never mind. What? Uh, no! After a long journey, I finally make it to the second bonfire in the Duke's archives. And now the plan is to go and kill the Hydra and the Dark Root Basin, like I mentioned earlier, get the Dusk Crown so I can get 20% damage bonus on my magic and proceed to rescue Big Hat Logan because he's been locked up a second time. After selling illegal magic to us at inflated prices, he blew all the money in Vegas, and unfortunately, he couldn't afford to bail himself out. We end up buying as many spells as we possibly can afford from him at the time to increase our magical damage, and also this progresses his quest line, which you'll see later in the run. Upon getting all the favorable attacks and executing the Soul Mass and Soul Spears properly, it was pretty easy to kill him, but it was very frustrating on how many attempts it took to get to this point. Dude, it's happening. Yes! Didn't even have to use crystal magic. Let's go, dude. <laughs> Man, even regular soul arrow destroys this guy now. That's cool. 
Am I doing all bosses? So I could, but I don't think so. We'll see. We'll see how quickly everything goes from this point, because I have another couple hours at least before we're done. And then we'll really be able to decide. Dude, that missed. Everything missed. Here we go. Okay, we're fine anyways. I wonder how much damage that would have done if it hit. Moonlight Butterfly is not required by any means, but it was fun to kill, and I got a little bit of extra souls for doing that too. You have to buy everything? Okay, so we might have to farm a bit more before we do this part, which is fine because he's already over here anyways. I'm sure many of you are probably wondering how would I make it to Bed of Chaos because of all the lava surrounding the area. Well, there's a way to do it where you don't actually need to go through the lava at all. You can offer 30 humanity to the Chaos Covenant getting plus two rank and have a shortcut opened to the right of Demon Fire Sage. Ceaseless Discharge was extremely difficult to try to figure out how to get past on this run. On the very first attempt, I ran to get the armor and couldn't escape, unfortunately. Upon returning, it was very difficult to even engage him in general because he'd blow me up from a distance every single time. No, there's no chance on that. That's silly. There was one attempt, however, where even though he was already triggered in the fight and was approaching me first, I pulled some sort of dank reverse Uno card on him and was able to get by him. I was really excited about this, but then I died shortly after to another explosion. There's no way. Yo! In the end, the goal on this was basically to get Ceaseless Discharge to keep walking without doing an attack at a distance so I could get right beside him. Luckily, the proximity of how close he was to the ledge was enough for me to connect the attacks with magic and kill him very quickly. That was it. Though even in that type of engagement, I did die right beside him many times. Does it count? Does it count? Does it count? Victory screen? Yes! I ended up picking up the Sunlight Maggot right before the shortcut to Bed of Chaos that I mentioned earlier, so I can use that later in Tomb of Giants and don't need to hold the Skull Lantern. Oh no. Why? Why, man? I fell for it. Time to not die to the hands, the sweepy hands. Okay, is he gonna... Are we swiping right away? No, it, dude, it reaches that far? What? Um, he's slamming. Okay, we're good. I think we're good. No. I gotta bait this slam and then walk around. I think that's the only way. One thing I didn't think of at all is on Bed of Chaos that I'd have to wait for the right attack to actually walk into the center of the arena. So, one of the learning lessons was you wait for the hand attack that has the slam by itself and not the double sweep. Upon finally getting into the center of the arena, there is a really cool trick you can do if you didn't know. You use the bow to line up two particular locations and throw firebombs on each arm, blowing them up and allowing the center to open immediately. Upon running into the center, the one thing we're looking for is no fire pillars. It's random, it's possible they kill me first try, but I got super lucky on this run and there was no fire pillars. To speed it up a little bit, I did use the short sword, which covered some distance as I was swinging and did allow me to kill the branches in the middle of the pathway very quickly. Normally, the absolute smartest way to do this would just be spamming roll because the distance you travel and the fact it breaks it while you're rolling is way better. Yes! Nothing else to buy from Logan at all. 50 intelligence, I don't know if I need that. But if I lose these souls though, that's gonna bother me. So I'm gonna get 50 intelligence anyways, why not? Wait, oh, I could have spaced that, no. No, wait, stun? Yes, okay. I can't move. Dude, he cornered me. Ah, oh, that was it. That was literally it, man. Now that we have enough souls to buy the final spells from Logan, we can finally progress his quest line. When Logan gets all of his spells purchased, he goes crazy, forgets who you are, and ends up in the arena that Invincible Seath kills you in in the first place. When you go back to that arena, you can kill Logan for the Tin Crystallization Catalyst, which is by far the best catalyst in the entire game. At the cost of reducing some of the spell castings that you can use, it does increase the damage quite a bit. Upon making it to Crystal Cave, there's not too many enemies that were in the way, but there was this one golem on the bridge that was a bit tankier than normal. I thought I'd be able to make him fall off by standing on the invisible portion of the bridge, which kind of backfired, but then at the same time, he did actually fall off too, so it counts. <laughs> we made him fall off too? Okay, there we go. I think casting power within beforehand is probably a good idea. And then um, I'm just gonna put a soul mass on anyways because there's no fog gate. Oh wait, the soul mass didn't even work. Crazy. Oh yeah, this is beautiful, okay. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> deleted. When we went back to Crystal Cave the second time, that golem did not respawn, which was amazing. But then they got me thinking, 
I did make it through all of Crystal Cave and kill Seath first try without getting hit a single time. Because if we got hit, we would have died anyways. But do you guys think it would be a good idea to try one HP, one stamina hitless? Let me know in the comments. Since Dark Souls cannot calculate a percentage of one HP, when you use Power Within, which would normally drain your health per second, it doesn't actually take any damage because it is percentage based as well, similar to fall damage. Therefore, you can use the effect of Power Within and not die. I tried to level up after killing Seath, but one unforeseen circumstance occurred. I think secretly what it is, is every single time I level Miyazaki's in his office pushing a button, that count- what? Power Within was still active, and because you have to change the character's stats back to one every single time you level with the cheat engine table, my health actually went full for a second, and then went back to one, but in between I died. <laughs> yeah, you me. Okay, so Logan is crazy. The final stage of Big Hat Logan's questline is now in effect. He will be completely crazy and not recognize the player character after buying all of his magic and killing Seath. We take a stroll back onto the Invincible Seath boss fight room, where we find Logan hollowed and attempting to kill the player character. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Should have leveled HP, loser. Although, like, looking at me, that's kind of like a contradictory thing to say. <laughs> when you kill Logan, you get the Tin Crystallization Catalyst, which I mentioned earlier, and we're good to go for major damage on the rest of the game. Okay, so this guy shouldn't throw firebombs or do the little pyromancy thing. So I'll probably cast Hidden Body again right away. Oh my god, dude, it works. Beautiful, man. Crazy, okay. That's really good. For those unaware, you can skip from the upper level of the catacombs down to pinwheel pretty quickly by doing a roll or a jump off of a ledge onto the lower platform. Now, since we can't do a roll or a jump, we were able to use the spear to make the gap and it was really cool. Okay, now we gotta make a run for it somehow. I have fire bombs though, so I can do the fire bomb trick here. Skeleton might be a little weird. Oh, he's gonna walk away anyways though. Oh yeah, that's... That's pretty damn good. Okay, so Hidden Body, I'm gonna have to cast one more time. The Bone Wheel shouldn't see me, and then we could probably do Pinwheel first try. So Catacombs definitely 100% can be done hitless, we know that. There is a chance one day I actually do this run hitless, maybe. <laughs> like, I know that that was a joke, but I'm kinda tempted to try it in the future. That's a one shot with just the Soul Mass. <laughs> but yeah, just getting to the Bonfire here could be pretty tricky. I really hope this magic is good enough to kill these guys. Like in one hit. Yeah, it is. Okay, we're good. So we might we might be fine on this part. Nope. Okay. Nice. And I think we might have made it. All right, that's dude. This is crazy. We did. We've done from Fire Link to Tomb of Giants hitless right now. That's that's pretty decent. I want to see you like the video, or at least give a comment, for getting from Firelink Shrine all the way to the first Tomb of Giants bonfire without taking a single hit and not even practicing it. Pop out regular Soul Spear free aim. Can I lock? Yep, okay, wait, I can. Nice. Oh shit! No! 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 Hogo did curse the, the hit list, damn it! <laughs> Oh man, see like, that's the thing, like with running, you could have sprinted at the last second there, but I just, I hesitated too long. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, it has like a poke attack, that's crazy. I'm visible again, that's not good. Damn it! Oh, uh, you know what, actually, there is another way to do this too. I could go around the other side and try to kill him. That might be a little bit easier because the, the base skeletons wouldn't be there because I survived for a little bit. Please don't kill me right away. No! Oh my god, okay, I gotta kill him. Gotta have soul mass cast there. Oh, he's doing the thing. No! Okay, there's no sword dance, we're good. After clearing out quite a few enemies to get to Nito, I ended up getting into the boss fight, using hidden body to conceal myself visually, and slumbering dragon crest ring to conceal my footstep sounds allowing all of the smaller skeletons to stay in place and for me to kill Nito from a distance. He's got dumped on. He, he had no idea what was going on, yeah. I tried to use this hidden body method to conceal myself in New Londo Ruins upon trying to get to Four Kings, but it didn't seem to work on the ghosts, so I had to kill them with transient curse items. After kicking down the ladder shortcut, I was able to position myself on the staircase, 
line up the bow and free aim fire bombs onto the rooftop to kill Ingward without actually having to go to him, obtaining the key to the seal and allowing us to progress to four kings. To do this trick, you want to shoot him with the bow to get him to start running across to the gate. And then once he's against the gate, you have a lot closer proximity to throw the fire bombs. If you're a character that's level one, this is a really good method. But if you have the stats and the bow does good damage, you can just shoot him with the bow the whole time. Well, that's all also always a possibility too. Oh man, I died again. There's two more right there. Oh, he's gonna kill me. Yep, see ya. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Okay, this room might be kind of shitty. Why is it so bad? No, he blocked it. There's no way. Could be difficult. So we'll do power within right here. Crystal homing soul mass should stay. Should be fine. Yeah, it just heavily depends on what this first one does. Okay, that's a good attack. Yep. Okay, we got lucky on that. I ran out of Crystal Soul Spears though, that's the only thing. Uh, should be fine. But that's the kind of shit you need. Don't attack. Okay, that's fine. I think. Oh, yo! <laughs> that would have been it, dude. No way. Oh, that's painful, man. For the first four kings fight, that's so painful. Okay, don't do magic right away and we're good. I love you. I actually really love you. Okay, it's good. Uh, that's not a good attack. Oh, it is. I lied. I wasted the soul spear. That's That was the problem last time. I wasted one. That's it. So we could have saved one, and then we, could, we actually could have killed the other king. I just realized. We literally would have won on the last attempt. So this isn't as bad as I thought it was if you get good RNG. Still less damage than I thought, maybe, but that kind of sounds wild at this point to say. Sucks. It's okay, though. We're getting there. I think we're going to get it. We're definitely getting this run today, 100%. There's no, there's no doubt. Just got to be very careful with how I do this. Nice. Nice. Okay, that's it. I think we got it, guys. Even if he does magic. I'll be honest, Four Kings is a little bit different than I, I actually thought it would be. Oh, I screwed that up. Uh, don't be weird. Don't be weird. There's no weirdness. I don't need weird. Don't kill me. No! No! No, dude. Oh. Oh, he's doing the stupid thing. So we can try to run. Power Within might run out. I don't know. This could be, yeah, that's, it's very tricky to run from that. The strategy for four kings is fairly simple. Stay outside the range of the very tip of their sword and cast magic from a distance, trying to kill them as quick as possible. Now, if they do the magic beam, that's kind of shitty. And if they also do anything like a grab, I'm not exactly sure how that would go down. Luckily, I did not get the grab, but I did get the magic attack quite often. And when we succeeded, we only had to kill two kings. The way this worked out was I was able to kill the first king and you can do extra damage as it's fading away and even after it's dead for a limited amount of time there's an invisible hitbox that still takes damage. The second king gets killed pretty quickly and I did fail in missing a few soul spears here and there but finally after a handful of attempts I got it. Like this. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Actual nerd wizard. Yeah. <laughs> My calculations make it so that it's precisely accurate to kill Gwyn in one engagement. <laughs> I killed four kings without even trying to kill the third one, reaping the benefits of maximum scaling with intelligence. Pushes up glasses. I need actual big glasses for the character, but that's one thing we missed out on. It's like, I did a hitless run, but I, I played it in segments. It's like, they, they, they turned the game off, they died, then they reset and loaded a save file, so it was a hitless run. Oh man, okay, uh, let's... Do power within for Gwyn and then parry him, I guess. I think homing soul mass alone will do a lot of damage. Now it's just a matter of how quickly can I cast the magic. And if I do it, will he attack me with a quick attack? Oh, that sucks. Soul mass ran out, that's fine. 
One thing that I did not foresee with Gwyn was that he input reads magic and sidesteps the crystal soul spears that I was casting. Okay, maybe maybe Gwyn's a little different than I thought he was. I don't know. Right when I realized this, he ends up quick swiping me, killing me on the first attempt. On the way back to the fight, I realized I had an enchanted falchion in my inventory. That would scale pretty decently with the amount of intelligence points we put in. So the method was going to be that I would parry Gwyn on the intro, I would repost him with the enchanted falchion, and then I would chug Estus. What this does is it makes him input read your action. There's a high chance that he'll do the slow two-handed swipe, which is very easy and predictable to parry. Now, even though it's possible for him to still do the quick swipe, majority of the attacks will be the predictable one. And it's basically just a gambling game of seeing, does he do that the whole time until he's dead? This gets looped and repeated by parry, repost, chug, parry, repost, chug, and so on. The crystal homing soul mass I had at the beginning of the fight actually did take a sizable amount of damage to get us started. And luckily we were able to get this right away. I'll do one more chug just to end on a parry. We'll, we'll, pl we'll play the gamble. The gamble works. We got it, guys. See, you you thought that I didn't have a plan. That enchanted falchion was on purpose. I just pretended I didn't actually need it. It was it was waiting the whole time. All right, so that's basically Dark Souls one. The required bosses plus some extra ones just for fun. With one HP, one stamina, and a lot of pain but some enjoyment too, for sure. And I think the only way to do this run and finish it off is to go outside the kiln here. I don't think I can actually set the world on fire. I think I have to be like the bad guy now. If you were ever wondering if it's possible or how you would do one HP, one stamina on Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition, here's your official playbook on how to do it. Now, I know I didn't do the DLC and there's only so many optional bosses we included. So if you want to see that in the future, I will go back and do it again. In the meantime, I kind of want to do this challenge on another game. So let me know what game you want to see this on next. Also, if you did like the video, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe to the channel as always. And if you want to see my other YouTube channels, they'll be linked on the screen right here. I have a long play channel that'll have the full video with minor edits from this run, as well as a music channel that features drumming, guitar playing, bass playing, and soon enough singing as well. Thank you for watching everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.